of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Ethelbert put on Christ. So in Christ may Ethelbert be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. Amen. Amen. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore and I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you also shall live. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. I greet you in Jesus' name. My name is Reverend Andrea Davidson. I am the pastor of North United Methodist Church, and I welcome you in Jesus' name. We've gathered here today to celebrate the life of our brother, Ethelbert Leslie Plummer. Let us praise God for his life. I know it's a funeral. I know we have grief and mourning here, but somebody say we came to worship. Amen. We came to praise God for Brother Plummer and his life. Today we acknowledge that we have human loss, but we also know that God is with us and that God is able to carry us even through this moment. So through our tears, we celebrate his life and we pray that God will grant you grace that even if you have pain, that you will know comfort. If you have sorrow, that you will have hope. Amen. Amen. And in the midst of death, we have the promise of resurrection in Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, I'm blessed this morning to have Reverend Egan Bavel, the pastor of Bloomfield United Methodist Church, assisting with the service. He's a longtime member of this church and know many of you. And so I praise God that you are willing to take time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. As you're able, please stand. Uh, the family may remain seated if you'd like to as we sing together. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. 701 in the United Methodist Hymnal.
for sending your son Jesus to the cross. God, for us, resurrection is not one day, it's every day. We thank you for your son. And now we come before you as we shrink before the mystery of death. God, we come to celebrate the life of your son whom you have called. God, we acknowledge that this is an appointment we all have to keep. And so we come just to celebrate who he is, who he was to us. We thank you for his family. We thank you for the saints gathered here. We pray, oh God, that this celebration would be one of glory and praise and honor to you. We thank you for every family member, but especially we lift up his children. God, you know them by name. We ask you to surround them and his family and his loved ones. That even in their time of grief, they would still experience the resurrection hope. We thank you for this flock. We pray, oh God, for the shepherd of this place. That even as she comes and ministers and brings a word, that someone will come and say, I want to know Jesus. God, may this, the rest of this service be a celebration, but everything will be done with order and excellence. So God, sanctify this place. May your Holy Spirit move in this place. That even as you have called your son, someone will make their calling an election sure. Today may be the day. But tomorrow is not promised. So God bless the rest of this service. And in your name we pray and God strengthen and affirm. Amen. 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 I believe the rest of the service continues. You'll see your name in the bulletin. So since it's not the Oscars, we're not going to be calling your name. <laughs> if you see your name, that means you are part of the service and we invite you to come. Respectfully use the mic here. This one I'm standing at and the service will continue. Good morning. Our first lesson come to, comes to us from Isaiah Chapter 40, reading from verse 1 through 8. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. 
Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The voice said, cry out. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. The word of the Lord. Good morning. The second lesson comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time of war, and a time of peace. The word of the Lord. As you are able, we invite you to stand in respect of the gospel. Good morning. Good morning. The gospel will be read from Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 15. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his favor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Glory be to God. Thanks be to God. May we see you My condolences to the family is as one who been through that mom and dad is gone I know the feeling but Paulette I know you as a lady of hope and so we look I'm sure you're looking forward to meet your dad sometime not tomorrow but somewhere in the beyond Yes. Steal away. Steal. 
and thank those who have shared so far, their family members, grands, and relatives, and thank you, Brother Audley. I just want to take a minute to, first of all, thank my colleague, the shepherdess of this house, Reverend Andrea. Thank you for allowing me to share, and we want to celebrate this woman of God. I thank God for her leadership here, so may God continue to bless you here. Um, I want to also, on behalf of my own church, the Bloomfield United Methodist Church, to Offer condolences to the family. You're my neighbors. Some of you are. And we pray God bless you even in this time. We acknowledge all of you. Thank you for being here. I think I see and recognize folks from the Faith SDA, where our brother 
shared in worship, so we're glad you are here. And the tributes will continue now. We invite persons to come and share. Um, what we'd ask is that you keep your tributes, you know, to two minutes. A friend of mine said that after two minutes, the mic might go dead. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> but two minutes with respect of time. I know you have a lot you can say about our brother, but we invite you to come this way. To my left here, use the mic. And after the tributes, we'll have Patrick, who will do the obituary. So we invite, I don't know if there's anyone selected, but if you're going to come and say a word about how our brother impacted you and how he spoke in your life, now's your time. See, fingers pointing. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Opie. I'll like to say a few words. I'd like to say a few words on behalf of the family. Say good morning again, everyone. Family and friends of Brother Plummer, our dear Uncle Sonny. We are here to give God thanks for the more than 85 years he has given Uncle Sonny on earth. We hope that he will see him soon in the new earth, in the, in the earth made new on Resurrection Day. Hortense, my sister, his niece, wanted me to share her last experience with him. I now read her words. Our cousin Carol, known to others by various names, would let us speak with her uncle when she visited. He always able to differentiate and it was always pleasing to us to know that he would instantly recognize to whom he spoke. He was very sharp and would beam with smiles when he would hear us and see and we would ring with our toes. We would ring with our joyous laughter and our ears. Even before he passed, Cousin Carol, his daughter, in her usual manner, telephoned us. When I spoke to him, I joke with him to invoke his alertness. Then I invited him to pray. I was not expecting a verbal response, and Carl Stand stated that he nodded his agreement. At that point, I said to him that he he did not have to try to speak or to relate to God all his gratitude, praise, and requests in thoughts. I reminded him that God is a spirit. He hears our thoughts and knows our desire before we even utter them. But we have to ask and tell him our desires, and I walk him through. Number one, I to give thanks for.
for all God has done for him. Confession and asking God for forgiveness for any sins known and unknown and to cleanse him from all unrighteousness. Then I prayed at the end of the prayer and was amazed that he uttered deep strong and clear conviction, the words, thank you. The words sound of those two words, I will never forget. I felt that his soul was at peace and Jesus was with him. Sorry about that. <laughs> Check on the experts of them. From our niece and nephews, Claire and family in Canada, Sophia and family, and Hortense, Bibbs, and family in Florida, Leonard, Opie, that's me, and my family in New York. Danny and family, Dawn and family in Jamaica. We all share the sentiments of memories of a jovial and loving uncle whose contagious laughter always steer us to respond in laughter from our toes and whose wide smile will be resistible these attributes we keep through all the years. Remember our Uncle Sonny for his laughter, his kindness to the family. Although we did not see him as often as we should, but we enjoy and remember the time that we had with him. May his soul rest in peace. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Michael, and Taylor, we call him Taylor. <laughs> I knew, I knew Taylor for the last, what, 50, 56 years? Yeah, well for years. Me and Patrick went to primary school together. He built my first PE shots when I was about five years old. So I don't consider my fr myself friend we're a family. Patrick is my brother. We went to first grade together and we're still here. Uh, took me a long time to get here. I was coming from Jamaica Wednesday because of the weather. Missed my cancel the flights. Straight flight from Montego Bay to JFK. I had to fly into Miami. Miami to Atlanta. Atlanta to Chicago. <laughs> Chicago to LaGuardia. I made it, I started that journey on Wednesday. I made it in about 10 o'clock last night. So <laughs> it was a journey, but I just had to come, show my last respect to Taylor. You know, so that's my journey. Taylor know I love you, I love Patrick. Everybody know Patrick as my brother. So I just had to come. 
So rest in peace, Mr. P. Thank you. Any other tributes? Um, and if you're now preparing your tributes after, I believe there will be a repast sometime later on, you can say yours at that point, I believe. Um, we're going to invite Kevin to come and do the obituary. Did I get it right? No, Patrick. I got it right this time. Patrick is going to come and do the obituary. Huh? <laughs> come on. All right, Pat. Not yet. Good morning. My name is Patrick. I'm the son. Ethelbert Sonny Leslie Plummer, age 89, of Bloomfield, Connecticut, previously Bowie, Maryland, and Los Angeles, California, passed away on Monday, March 4th, 2024. Ethelbert was born on November 24th, 1934 in Adelphi, St. James, Jamaica, West Indies, to the late Hilda Samuels and Mr. Ernest Plummer. His siblings consisted of two brothers and two sisters, Lloyd, Milton, Amy, and Kat Kathleen. Ethelbert was a tailor by profession. His, excellence, his excellent tailoring skills, attention to detail enabled him to serve secure a sewing contract with the Zaydis department store chain in downtown Kingston, Jamaica. For many years until migrating to the United States, he was well known and revered by avid Trash and Ready. Y'all know what Trash and Ready mean? Trash and Ready, pants lent, you know, turling on wool, those kind of things. Um, Pantsuits, he was well known by those guys who want those kind of clothes, right? From all over Eastern Kingston, where we resided. In the summer of 1979, he migrated to Los Angeles, California, where he enrolled and completed a California Certified Nurses Aid Certification Program. That was a very proud moment for him. <clears throat> he worked in that career field for a few years until he assumed a position with the Four Seasons Hotel in Los Angeles, where he worked until retirement. <clears throat> Ethelbert was an avid and skilled domino player, right, Bert? Who played for a few do um, domino clubs while in Jamaica. One club in particular was the Small X <clears throat> Domino Club, which comes to mind. Over the years, while in Jamaica, he traveled and took part in several island-wide domino tournaments where he and his club partners dominated their opponents. Some of Ethelbert's other favorite hobbies included watching sports and playing board games. He was, a very, passion he was very passionate about sports, especially basketball. His favorite team, of course, being the Los Angeles Lakers. <clears throat> Ethelbert is lovingly remembered by his, his five children, Jennifer, Paulette, Patrick, Ainsworth, and Vanessa. His, his six grandchildren, Kevin, Shireen, his wife, Patricia, Tricia, Kasner, Adrian, Derek, and his five great-grands, Shanice, McKenna, Kiona, Kesner Jr. and Grayston. His nieces, Hortense, Sophia, Dawn, Claire, nephews, Danny and Leonard, and stepson, Ezra. Ethelbert is preceded in debt by his wife, Miss, Mrs. Eileen Plummer, his two sisters, Mrs. Amy Pinnock, and Mrs. Kathleen Plummer, and one brother, Mr. Milton Stewart. That completes my obituary. Thank you. <clears throat> Reverend Bernice Gordon, come at this time to share 
the acknowledgements. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Praise God. All right, you guys. A few acknowledgements here that I will read. This one is from the Oak City Baptist Church. To the family of Mr. Ethelbert Plummer, we, the pastor, officers, and members of the Oak City Baptist Church, Raleigh, North Carolina, wish to express to you the immediate family of Mr. Ethelbert Plummer, our deepest sympathy and heartfelt condolences in his passing. A grandson, Mr. Kevin Vernon, his wife, Mistress Sharon Vernon, and their daughter, McKenna Vernon, are active, faithful members of our church family. Brother Vernon is one of our outstanding and most capable leaders serving as a church trustee and superintendent of our Sunday school, of our church Sunday school. Trustee Vernon's mother, Miss Paulette Plummer, and grandmother, Miss Doris Brody, have frequently visited our church as well. We are deeply sorrowful that many of us are not able to be there with you today as you celebrate the life and memory of your beloved one but our thoughts and prayers are with you. Keith Bennett provides a consoling message for all of us in this time like this entitled, God Cares. God cares when his eyes is on the sparrow and each budding leaf that grows, when he sends the dew each morning and the sunshine to the rose. You may know beyond all doubting in this trial you're passing through. God cares and every moment is watching over you. Yours in Christ, Pastor William T. Newkirk at the Oak City Baptist Church. Praise God, praise the Lord. And we have some cards here for some loved ones that were not able to attend. This is to Sister Paulette and family. May God, our refuge, and our strength help you through your sorrow, and in his mercy grant you peace to lighten each tomorrow. This is from Pastor Egan and family. Oh, here. <laughs> we know Mr. P is in a peaceful place. We shall see him one day when we get to heaven. This is from Elder Carl and Sweets Williams. God is a God of mercy, comfort, and love. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the comfort of all comfort. We were so saddened to hear of the death of your beloved Father. Please accept our deepest condolences. We will be keeping you and your family in prayer. Have faith in God's love, for you know that he is there to provide you with all the comfort and strength you need. Be encouraged with deepest sympathy from Seabrook staff and church family. I guess this is a Seabrook Seventh-day Adventist church that Mr. P used to attend. Praise God. This one is from Betty. I am praying for you that God may give you his strength. Love you, my dear. Grieving gives us time to hold. We comfort each other more closely. Our fond remembrance are shared. Awaiting together, the sorrow will lessen. Our treasured thoughts will forever remain. This one to my dear Auntie Carol. Sorry to hear about the passing of your dad. Our thoughts and prayers are with you during this difficult time. Sending our love and deeper sympathy. We love you. From Kalia, Kim, and Leighton.
praying God peace and comfort for you in your loss. May the good Lord be with you all in a time like now. Stay strong. He is your comforter. He will never leave you alone. To Mrs. Vernon and family from the Dawkins family. With caring thoughts and prayers, I am so sorry for the loss of your father. Sending you my deepest condolences and warm hugs during this heartwarming time. And pray that the Lord God Almighty will comfort you in your time of grieving and give peace. Please and give peace. May God bless you and strengthen you during this difficult time. Love, Irene. One. This is from Winsome and Maurice and Sister Madge, Florence and family. On behalf of our entire family, I would like to express my condolences and deepest sympathy to Carol and the entire family of Brother Leslie Plummer, fondly referred to as Brother Les. Brother Les was married to my best friend Eileen for many years. They lived in California for quite some time, then moved to Maryland. He and Eileen made a great pair, and you would seldom see one without the other. They attended church each Saturday and became devoted members of the Seabrook Seventh-day Adventist Church in Maryland. They were active in Bible studies and growth groups which were designed for Christian growth with emphasis on helping others. They contributed generously to the needs of the church and were well known and loved by the members, ultimately developing many long-term friendships there. Brother Les knew how to dress and was very selective with his choice of fashion. We would often compliment him on his classy outfits, then learned he was once a professional tailor who specialized in designing and making men's clothing. He was careful about maintaining a healthy lifestyle. He ate only those food that promote health, especially fruits and vegetables. His daily meal schedule was always consistent with little to no room for compromise. Eileen, in Eileen's absence and while still in Maryland, he enjoyed going to the grocery store with his friend he did not believe in excess and bought only what he needed. Staying healthy was important to him, so he made sure all dental and medical appointments were kept. Maurice took pleasure in taking time, taking him to these appointments. Brother Les loved various entertainments such as movies, sports, and gospel music. He and Marie spent many hours enjoying sports music together. He knew all the football, basketball teams, nationwide, including college, professional teams. He also knew the names of the players on each team. His memory was beyond great. He liked listening to the news and world events and politics. After church on Saturday, Brother Les enjoyed listening to sermons, health, and musical presentation. In addition, numerous other topics and Christian television station, such as 3ABN, Hope Channel, and many others. Global mission was of a special interest to him, and he contributed financially to several causes. He was very knowledgeable about the gospel, read and owned that many books and the subject. Saturday night was a time for playing dominoes with a selected group of friends. This was his time. Brother Les was really missed to everyone when he moved to Connecticut in 2018 to live with his daughter, Carol. Although this was a sad time for our family, we understand his move was best for him. And after he moved, I continued my friendship with Brother Les and would converse with him on an ongoing basis. When he later transitioned to the home, Carol made sure I talked to him even when he was not feeling his best. 
Brother Les was very engaged with the Seventh-day Adventist church leadership and knew the names of vast numbers of pastors and conference leaders throughout North America and Jamaica. His faith was strong. Praises to God were always on his lips. He would often say, can you imagine if we didn't have God in our side? We will always remember and cherish the time spent with our brother and friend. Brother Les, we look forward to seeing him on the great day when the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will rise. Rest in peace, Brother Les. God bless you. Let us stand together and sing, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Yeah. 
you may be seated. It is still morning, I think by one minute, so good morning again. Praise God for this opportunity to share a word of comfort for this family and for each of you. To the family and all of Brother Plummer's loved ones, on behalf of North United Methodist Church, um, Sister Paulette's Church, um, I offer our condolences to your family as well. Amen. Amen. And we continue to pray that God comforts you. We pray for you on Sundays, but we continue to pray that God comforts you in this time. Uh, there is a word found in John's Gospel, the 14th chapter, beginning at the first verse, John chapter 14. Verse 1 reads, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. The word of God for the people of God. Let's be to God. Let us pray. God, you are good. You are great and greatly to be praised. As we gather this day to share in your word, we pray, O oh God, that you who sent your son to be the bread of life for us, will continue to feed us, O oh God. Nurture us, O oh God, that in this difficult hour we will know your comfort, your strength, and your promises are true toward us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. We gather this day to bid, where, bear well, to bid farewell to our brother in Christ. Ethelbert Plummer was a loving father, grandfather, great-grandfather, and friend. He had the privilege, I, I had the privilege, excuse me, of speaking with the family, and I learned that he was always supportive of his family and offered encouragement to others. Well, the plumber was an active Christian, as you've heard in the Seventh-day Adventist church. Although us being in a Methodist church, I think it appropriate to note that he had Methodist roots, amen? His mother was a Methodist in Jamaica. He was a man of strong faith active in his church in Los Angeles, in Maryland, and here in Connecticut. At North United Methodist Church, when Sister Plummer brought him to prayer meetings, he was responsible for choosing the hymns. And he would often choose that hymn that we sang together, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, Hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. Being the tailor that he was, I'm told that he was a well-dressed man. No jeans for him. One of the former pastors of this church, Reverend Hamilton, when he met him, he said, my, what a handsome man you are. Although he had a quiet demeanor, he knew how to have fun. You've heard it already. He loved dominoes. He loved basketball, a devoted Lakers fan. He loved to cook. And he was a man who loved his car. I'm told that he bought his car before he ever got his driver's license. That's faith, amen? He loved that car so much 
that he bought bottled water to wash his car. <laughs> and he kept that car for many years. When he moved from California to Maryland, he held on to it. We bid, bid farewell to this man of God. And even though there is a sense of loss, we as Christians celebrate today. We praise God that Ethelbert lived. Amen? We praise God that he lived his life well. And we thank God that we have the promises of Jesus Christ, the promise of everlasting life. Jesus' disciples were in a similar position to you. Jesus let them know that his time on earth was about to end. Little children, Jesus says, you a little while longer and I will not be with you. Jesus prepared them for his departure, prepared them for the new normal when he would no longer be with them. When I'm gone, Jesus says, I need you to know how to carry on as I've taught you. And so he gave them a new commandment. Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. Some of you who went to church on Holy Thursday remember that scripture. Like many of us in the face of death, Peter, his disciple, is not ready to let go of Jesus. Jesus, tell me where you're going so that we can go to Jesus. Tell us why we can't follow you now. Peter, with deep devotion, says to Jesus that he's willing even to give up his life for him. Peter's words, like the song by boys to men, some of you remember it's hard to say goodbye, shows us that uh, we all have to wrestle with the reality of losing a loved one and that we need God to help us in our time of grief. Jesus offers a word of comfort to his disciples and to us today as we bid farewell or as some would say so long for now to Brother Plummer. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. There's something in this that Jesus lets us know that we have a choice about it. Do not let this trouble you. How is it that we are not to let our hearts be troubled even in the face of death? Jesus says, trust God, believe in God, believe also in me. Another translation says, trust in God, trust also in me. The antidote to our hearts being troubled is faith. Somebody say faith. It's choosing to trust God, that God is greater than any concern that we have, that God's power is greater than any situation that we might face, that, that, that not, not a lot of good will be done if we worry, amen. We trust God and we trust Jesus also because we trust that God is able to take care of us in our hour of need. Beyond this life, Jesus says, there is more. While we may live in these earthen frail vessels for a while, there is a city not made by hands eternal in the heavens that God has prepared for us. Jesus promises his disciples, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. I like the King James Version. It says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I like the idea that God has mansions prepared for us. He says, I go to prepare a place for you, and I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's good news, church. That when we leave this life, we have the promise of eternal life with God. When I was growing up, I, we used to sing this song in church. Maybe some of you are familiar with it. We'll soon be done with all these troubles and trials. When I 
get home on the other side. I'm going to shake my hands with the elders. I'm going to tell all the people, good morning. I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus. I'm going to sit down and rest a little while. Jesus lets us know that when our life is done, we'll have an opportunity to sit down beside our Jesus. Sit down and rest a little while. Jesus not only promises a, us a home in glory in the life to come, he promises us answered prayers in this life. In verse 13, Jesus says, I will do whatever you ask in my name so the Father can be glorified in the Son. When you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. Jesus knows that when he leaves, his disciples will still need his help. Jesus lets them know that he is not going to leave them without helping them. He will still provide them the victory. Jesus encourages his disciples that when they pray, if they ask, y'all remember when Jesus says, ask, keep asking, seek, and keep seeking, knock, and don't just knock one time when you pray, keep knocking, amen. He taught them that their prayers will be answered, that God is faithful. Some of you might be wondering, Reverend, when we pray, whatever we pray for, Jesus will give us. Well, there's another scripture, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, I think, provides some clarification. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will... I know I've prayed some prayers. I'm so glad that God didn't answer. Anybody else here? We have this confidence that if we, in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we seek, we ask, we know that he will give us what we ask for. It says if we ask according to his will, Jesus will do what we ask for so that the Father can be glorified. So that in everything, somebody say in everything, everything. God is glorified. And then Jesus leaves them with the promise of an advocate. He says the Father will send you an advocate, the spirit of truth. He lives with you and will be with you. Verse 26, he goes on to say, the advocate is the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in Jesus' name, in his name. And the Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of everything that Jesus told you. I leave you with this word and this promise this day that God has not left you alone, family. Church, God has not left you alone, even in the death of a loved one. God promised to send in Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, who will be with you in your time of grief. Amen? Amen. Who will comfort you in the midst of this, uh, this loss and who will be with you and teach you in the days ahead of how to carry on. Uh, this is the promise of Jesus Christ for us and he promises us his peace. He says, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Receive these promises of God in Jesus Christ for you this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I met with the family. And we're a good Methodist church, but... Uh, we don't normally do altar calls at a funeral, but we decided this day uh, we would uh, honor our brother in Christ, Brother Plummer, by extending an invitation to you because perhaps there's someone here today that doesn't know Jesus Christ for themselves. We all know that life is a gift, amen? No 
one knows the day or the hour when Christ shall return and no one knows the day or the hour when he'll call us home. Amen. So if there is one today that has never made a commitment to walk with Jesus Christ, I extend an invitation to Christian discipleship to you that you will know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins. For it is in him that we are saved. John 3.16 says God loves you. God loves the whole world so much that he sent his only begotten son into the world that in him we are saved. Amen? So as we stand across the sanctuary, we're going to sing that refrain again that our organist is playing. Do not pass me by. Me by. Pass me not, oh gentle Savior. If there is one today, I invite you to raise your hand. Thank you. together in our affirmation of faith, sharing together in the Apostles' Creed. It is found in your bulletin. Together, let us affirm our faiths on the screen. It's in your bulletin. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sent by the right hand of the Father. From thence you shall come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. Amen. Together, let us pray, pray of commendation. God of us all, your love, love never, never ends. ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who have weak, strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love of which we hold one another. In all our ways, we trust you. O oh God, all that you have given us is yours. As first you gave a talbert to us, now we give a talbert back to you. Receive a talbert into the arms of your mercy. Raise a talbert up before your people. Receive us also and raise us into a new life. Help us so to love and serve you in this world that we may enter your joy in the world to come. Amen. 
God of love, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us even to this day. For the gift of joy in days of health and strength and for the gifts of your abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and friends and for our baptism and place in your church with all who have faithfully lived and died. Above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our griefs, who died our death, and rose for our sake, and who lives and prays for us. As he taught us, so now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I leave you with this blessing. Now may the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, according to the riches of God's glory, grant you to be strengthened with might through God's spirit in your inner being, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that God's spirit, that, that, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length, and height, and depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Please remain standing as we sing together our closing hymn, The Strife is Over, The Battle is Done. And after we sing that hymn, uh, we will have instructions um, as we prepare to go to the cemetery. Amen? Amen. Yeah. <laughs>